your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, what was that? Mm. David, you're not asleep. Don't pretend. I'm sleeping. Now, shh. Don't wake me. Oh, there it is again. I don't hear you or it. Oh, David, look, it's the Dane. I know it's the Dane. It's been the Dane all night. What's he doing he's now? He's the floor with his tail. Oh, that's great. Oh, David, he's so sweet. Look at him. He's sound asleep. Probably having the most beautiful dreams and thumping the floor with his tail. I wish I were sound asleep. It's been a beautiful night, hasn't it? Beautiful? I never want to live through such a night again. I'm exhausted. I got about five minutes sleep, all because of that dog, and I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted, too, but I love it. After all, darling, what do you expect? It's his first night in the house. You can't expect to have him take it lying down. No, I suppose that would be asking too much, but did he have to keep leaping across my bed as if I were a fence in a steeplechase <laughs> he race? He was just trying to get acquainted. <laughs> and I noticed each time he leapt at you, you two had a wrestling match. I just thought I could tire him out, but it worked in reverse. <laughs> It was a dog of a night. Wasn't it sweet, the way he appointed himself watchdog for the neighborhood? Adorable. We'll probably be evicted oh, by noon. Just because he barked a little, don't be silly. Hearing a dog bark gives people a nice, safe feeling. Oh, look at him now. Look at the way his upper lip jiggles when he breathes. Oh, he's nothing to be so proud of. But well, he looks as if he's going to be quiet for a little while. Do you like to try and get some sleep, darling? What's the use? The minute my eyes closed, he would he would take it as his cue to turn a somersault. No. Weary as I am, I might as well get up. Maybe you can take a little nap at the office. Oh, sure. Now that I've got an extra mouth to keep in stakes, I, I suppose I can just quit working completely. Darling, let's try to do this quietly. I don't want that monster to wake up any sooner than he has to. David, don't run around without your bathrobe. You'll catch cold. I'd catch the measles today if they came my way. <laughs> I feel as if I've been climbing mountains in ski clothes. Where is my bathrobe? I, I thought I left it on the chair. Don't you remember the dog played with it during the night? Oh, it's under yeah. your bed. Yes, I've got it. Do you think he was trying to put it on? Probably. <laughs> I'll go make breakfast, darling. We'll dress in the other room so we won't wake him. There's nothing like playing second fiddle to a great Dane, I always say. It's like playing second fiddle to a big bass. Where are you going? Going to get the newspapers, mine? No, I don't mind. But, David, don't let Shakespeare out of the spare room. Why not? Because Shakespeare and the Dane haven't met yet. And I don't feel strong enough this morning to witness a cat and dog fight. Now, darling, you can't go on isolating the two of them in different rooms for the rest of their lives. Why can't I? How long can two animals live in a four-room apartment without meeting or at least nodding in the hall? Till we get to know the Dane better and train him to take care of Shakespeare. We haven't even given him a name. You realize, of course, that this dog is perfectly aware that there's a cat in the house. Of course I do. Well, I don't agree with your methods of handling these two beasts. But I don't feel up to arguing with you this morning. I'll just go and get the papers. <coughs> David, he's awake! <coughs> David, there he goes! Don't let him out the front door! David, what happened? He ran out the door, the big blithering idiot. Oh, we'd better catch him. If any of the other tenants meet him in the hall, they may be frightened. Frightened? They'd be paralyzed. Which way did he go? He's around the other side of the elevator. Look! David, the fire stairs. Maybe they left the door open. They did. Which way did he go? I don't know. You go down, I'll go up. Oh, we're not even dressed. Oh, I wish he had a name so I could call in something. Hey, you, you, you dog, where are you? Do you see him? I hear him. You went your way. I'll come, too. I hear you, you, you fugitive, you. Beautiful gratitude for the lovely night we let you spend. I'm coming, I'm coming. I see him. Here he is. David, he found a little boy. Keep them a 
apart until I get there. I'm coming. It's too late. They're together. Gee, he's a big dog. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right, I think. He, he just surprised me a little. You can pat him. He doesn't mind. He doesn't? Mm-mm. He's an awful big dog, isn't he? You'll be that, that big someday. What's his name? He hasn't got a name yet. He hasn't got a name? Mm-mm. Well, you can't have a dog without a name. Everybody's got a name. Well, we just got him yesterday, son. He'll, he'll have a name all right. What do you think we should call him? Well, gee, I, I don't know. He, he sure is beautiful. How about Rover? I read a book once about a dog called Rover. Rover? Well, Rover's a nice name, but uh, not nice enough for a dog like this, do you think? No, I guess not. He's beautiful. Oh, say, he's licking my hand. He likes you because you're not afraid of him. No, I'm, I'm not afraid of him. Why should I be afraid of him? No reason at all. This dog wants to be your friend. He does? Mm-hmm. Gee, I never had a dog for a friend before. You didn't? Well, that's terrible. My mother, she doesn't like dogs. Oh? Uh, she won't let me have a dog, not even a little one. Well... Maybe she's, ne- she's never known a nice dog like this. I guess not. He's a swell dog, nicer than any dog I've ever met. We think so. Well, I guess we better be getting back to our apartment, David. We look all these silly standing around in our bathrobes. <laughs> like, like an Indian or something. I'd, I'd forgotten we... about that. Well, well, so long, son. <laughs> you going already? We have to. We have to have breakfast. We have to give breakfast to our dog, too. Oh, gee, that, that's too bad. What do you feed him? Large quantities of meat. For breakfast? Mm-hmm. That's because he's such a large dog. <laughs> well, well, so long, doggy. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. Say, uh, are, uh, are you busy right now? Are you uh, going anyplace? No, it's Christmas vacation. And I'm just wandering about. Would you uh, like to see the dog have breakfast? Gee, could I? Your mother won't worry about you if you don't go upstairs. Oh, no. She sent me out to play. Gee, can I watch the dog have breakfast? You bet you can. Come on. Hey, wait for me, doggy. Hey, don't come back. Oh, darling. Every little boy should have a big dog. Don't worry. Ours will. We will have a dog for each one of them, David. Six dogs. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First things first. Is this where you live? The door's open and the dog's gone in. Yeah, that's it. He sure is a smart dog. Well, here we are. You better close the door, David. He won't run away. He likes it here. I hope so. All right, go on. You can play with him. He won't hurt you. I know he won't. He likes me, too. <laughs> hey, I thought you said he had meat for breakfast. He does. Well, then what's that milk in the saucer for? Milk is for cats. We have a cat, too. You have a cat, too. Mm-hmm. Say, this is some place you've got. <laughs> Gee, I sure wish I lived up here with you. You can come up any time you like. Did you hear that, Dorothy? You and me are going to have swell times. <laughs> well, darling, I, I guess I'd better get the coffee on. Yeah, I, I guess I'd better get dressed. Oh, uh, say, mister, uh, how does a cat and dog get along together? We don't know yet. You don't know? No, as a matter of fact, they haven't met yet. We... We only got the dog yesterday. I guess maybe they'd fight. I guess maybe they would. (laughs) Now, that just goes to show how much you two know about cats and dogs. You know what I think? I think they would get along swell. You do? Mm Mm-hmm. Is he an awful little cat? Still a kitten. And, David, whatever is in your mind, you better go and get dressed. Say, wait a minute. How would you like to see the cat and dog meet for the first time, son? David, no, please, no. Now, look, now, look, darling. This game of... Hide and seek can't go on forever. Why not? Doggy, how'd you like to meet a cat? <laughs> See, he'd like it. No, he'd like it. But what about Shakespeare? Somebody's got to think of Shakespeare. You know, Shakespeare needs a good watchdog. Doesn't need him this minute. This minute is as good as any other. No, it isn't. It isn't. Oh, why does everything have to happen to me? Now, nothing's going to happen to anybody. Now, son, you keep right on playing with the dog. And we'll go David, ahead. I'm not going to be responsible for anything that happens. That's fine. Now, darling, you go right ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Is he in a bag? You see, you're not even making sense. He means out of the bedroom. Oh, 
Oh, you mean you're going to make some meat now. I am. Go on, darling. Go get Shakespeare. David, I'll never forgive you. Now, fella, you're going to meet Shakespeare. I want you to behave, see? Does he understand when you talk to him? Sure he understands. Don't you, boy? Well, he looks as if he understood. Well, and you're going to behave, remember? No barking, no growling. You're not going to take one swipe at that poor helpless cat, you hear me? Well, here we are, Frank Buck. Would you like a whip, too? No, thank you. I'll just use my hypnotic eye. And remember, I warned you. (laughs) All right, darling. Now, just put Shakespeare on the floor. (gasps) On the floor! And you, son, you come over here and stand next to me. This is going to be fun, isn't it? Bet it is. All right, Claudia, put him on the floor. I'm not going to look. Sissy, sissy. He's on the floor. They're just looking at each other. So far, so good. They're not looking. They haven't moved. Hey, the dog is wagging his tail. What's happening? Nothing yet. Now, now go on, fella. Nothing to be afraid of. The cat's humping its tail. Oh, you poor Shakespeare. Now, Shakespeare, no funny business. His hair is standing up straight. Shakespeare's terrified. The dog doesn't seem to mind. Shakespeare! Shakespeare! He's going to break the dog's eyes out. Shakespeare! Shakespeare, you monster, you tiger. There. I've got him. Shakespeare, you beast. Look. The dog is just standing still. I don't think he noticed either. Now, you're a good dog. Come over here. Come on. Huh? Come on. Gee, that's <laughs> some dog. He wouldn't even touch the cat. Shakespeare, I'm ashamed of you. Don't you know a friend when you see one? And who was supposed to be afraid of who? Why, that dog is a big bluff. He's so big. Still, he's kind of small. He's so big, he doesn't have to bother with anything small, except to take care of it. He's a wonderful dog. Even a mouse would be safe with him. Shakespeare, you ought to be ashamed of yourself fighting like that. (laughs) I'm exhausted. Come here, you bluff. Come over here. I'll scratch your ears for you. (laughs) David, I guess you won. I guess maybe the dog's too much of a gentleman to fight back. Shakespeare, it's all right now. Relax. That dog is a gentleman. <laughs> look. Hey, look, look, he's looking at the little boy's face. <laughs> we could have had a little boy that old if we'd met sooner. Uh, when you were about seven. Oh, you big bluff, I love you. Someday I'm going to have a big dog just like you. And I guess the dog's got a name after all. Looks like it. Think you'll answer to it? Let's try and see. Come here, bluff, let's go. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. What's better than a congenial evening at home, surrounded by good friends? Whether it's New Year's Eve or any evening, when they come in and settle down for a chat, when you bring out the frosty bottles and say, have a Coke, life is good. Be ready for such evenings, expected and unexpected. Buy Coca-Cola by the case, so there's always a supply on hand for the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>